In this video, I'm going to show you how I come up with color schemes for painting miniatures. There are many ways to approach color schemes when painting miniatures. In this video, I'm going to show you my approach. The focus of this video is going to be showing you how I approach a project from start to finish in terms of deciding what colors to put on the miniature. It might surprise you to learn that this has almost nothing to do with color theory or color wheels and has a lot more to do with finding unrelated artwork to combine into your own miniature color schemes. Before starting any project, I'd like to encourage you to examine your motivations for painting. Is this project going to be an army for use on the tabletop? Or is this going to be for a competition or to show off on the internet? Or maybe it's to advance a specific skill that you have. Whatever your decision is, I think it's important to identify this motivation before you start because it will influence the decisions you make in terms of what paint you're going to put on the miniature. For me personally, I find my most common motivations are, number one, I see a hot new model being released online and I think it would be really fun to paint it. So there's that kind of novelty factor. The second one, which has come up recently, is, oh, I bet I could make a cool video by painting that model. And then my third motivation, which I feel a bit guilty about, but I'm very willing to confess, is that I see a new model and I think no one has done this color scheme yet. I want to paint this to be able to show off online. I don't encourage this sort of behavior, but I think it's good to be honest with yourself about your motivations when painting because this can help narrow down the paints that you're going to use and the processes you're going to use. For example, if your motivation is to just get it on the tabletop fast, you might opt to just do everything with contrast paints and pick a simple contrasting color scheme like blue and orange or um, red and green, you know what I mean. Sometimes simplest can be best if you want to get something done really quickly. Or if you're being honest with yourself that you really like the way the night goblins look on the box art, sometimes it's okay to just copy the box art. There's been a few times when I've thought to myself, maybe I'll just do the studio color scheme for this army because I like it so much. It's worth examining your motivations before you paint something because sometimes you'll find that you are innovating too much when you don't really need to. If you just wanna get this project done fast, or if you really like the color scheme that someone else has done already, it's okay to copy that color scheme, and it's okay to paint things fast and simple. Now that we're clear on our motivations, I'd like to talk about what I feel is the most important thing to deciding your color scheme, and that is reference material. If you go to any sort of art school, they will tell you over and over again to use reference. It's okay to copy other people's work and it's okay to reference real life photographs or other pieces of artwork in terms of learning to get better at art. So when starting any sort of project, I would like to recommend you don't even begin to look at a color wheel or anything like that until you have a sufficient amount of reference material. Personally, I have a folder on my computer that I have labeled Miniature Reference. And inside of that folder, I have a few subfolders for upcoming projects that I'm starting to think about what I want them to look like. And whenever I see something online, a piece of artwork, it might be miniature artwork, or it might be, uh, it's more commonly actually a two-dimensional painting or something, or sometimes a photograph, I will save it into these folders and gradually accumulate sort of a Pinterest board. It's not on Pinterest, but you know what I mean? Of a material that sort of is centered around a certain theme. Or if I see something I just like online and I think I might want to use it as inspiration later, I'll just save it to the more general section of that folder. I like to think of almost all of the artwork that I do as a sort of collage medium whether it's painting miniatures or video editing or design work, 
I am almost always just looking at what other people have done and combining it in a way that creates something new. So for miniature painting, I'm usually taking a certain art style or a certain set of reference images and just translating that onto a miniature color scheme. So I'd like to talk a little bit about theme and tone and how I apply the theme of a color scheme to the theme of an army. I'll be using the night haunt that I painted this year as an example. One of the fun things that I like to do is combine some aspect of the lore in the game world with sort of a theme in real life. And with these night haunt, that's what I've done. So I didn't know a lot about Age of Sigmar going into painting these night haunt, but one of the things that I did know is that they were created as sort of a glitch or anomaly in magic. So they are, even among undead, they're sort of an unnatural type of undead. So I wanted to evoke something in these figures that was slightly unnatural. I didn't want them to look like they belonged in the real world, which led me to the idea of creating sort of a more vibrant, creative color scheme for them. I also knew that in the Age of Sigmar universe, there's something called grave sand, which is sort of a magical substance from the realm of death, which is purple. So I thought purple is probably a good place to start. So going into this, I knew I wanted to create a color scheme that would combine the color purple and some sort of unnatural or otherworldly aesthetic. I was also watching a lot of Vaporwave compilations on YouTube at the time. Vaporwave is sort of a musical genre which is based on this idea of a feeling of nostalgia for a time that never quite existed in real life. So I thought it would be cool if I created a color scheme for undead that never really existed in the first place. Almost like echoes of undead that think they existed but they didn't quite exist. So this was the theme that I was going with. I would take Vaporwave album art and the sort of idea of these undead anomalies and create a color scheme based on these two ideas, one from the real world and one from the fiction. So the next step was creating a folder of reference material, and often what I ended up using was album covers from Vaporwave albums. I would say that the single most influential piece of artwork that inspired this army was this piece of artwork by Aaron Campbell. You can see in this piece of artwork, it evokes a sort of nostalgia just by looking at it, at least for someone in my age range. And it uses a lot of these dark purple and indigo tones mixed with these kind of light coral tones. So this is the inspiration for the main colors in my army, was just taking colors from an existing painting that I thought looked cool. Using this existing palette, I took some of the colors I already had in my collection and started experimenting on pieces of cardboard with ways I could combine these colors to create interesting shapes for ghosts. A lot of these drafts of how I came up with this color scheme are long gone by now, but if you look at this picture, you can see how I was painting on this piece of cardboard and experimenting with where the colors might go on a sort of ghostly figure. You can see I've added sort of a very light blue green color, which is not in any of the reference material, but I just sort of went on instinct that I thought it would look cool with the other colors. Maybe I was also inspired by some of the artwork in the Soul Wars box set, as this is sort of the color that they paint most of the ghosts. In any case, I thought that this really light blue-green color would contrast very well with the purple and pinks and corals in the rest of the color scheme. My next step was to create a simple test model using an old model in my collection that was sort of similar looking to a night haunt. You can see that this model is very far from what the final product ended up looking like, but there is sort of an aspect of it which you can see is sort of similar. Once I had the figures in hand, I decided to create a test model using the cheapest and easiest to replace model in the army, the Glaive Wraith. This also happens to be one of the coolest looking models in the army, in my opinion. But if I messed up this test model, I knew it would be easy to replace it because you can buy them fairly cheap at the store in packs of three or 
four, four. I just painted some, I should know that. So after playing around with the colors that I had picked on this test model for a while, I came to something that I thought looked pretty good. Using this test model, I pretty much used the same colors on the entire army and I would use slight variations to create visual interest. On some of the hero figures, I used a little bit more of a light teal color, which was not present in the baseline figures. I thought that this goes well with the color scheme, but also it helps those hero figures stand out a little bit more from the ground troops. I also experimented recently on some Banshee figures with inverting the color scheme, having the coral color at the top and the purple color at the bottom. I'm not going to be talking about the exact process for painting these figures in this video, but I have been working on another video about airbrush gradients where I'm going to show you the entire process for painting these figures. Thank you for watching part one of my series on color schemes. In the next part, I'm going to show you how I build an entirely new color scheme from scratch for my Ossiarch Bone Reapers army. Before we go, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. It has been amazing to me how much support I've been given on Patreon, and I am extremely thankful to all of you who have pledged on there. If you'd like to see your name up here, or if you'd like me to mail you some of the figures featured in this video, you can do so at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. If you'd like to see my daily updates on my videos and what I've been painting, you can do so on Instagram or Twitter at Dana underscore Howell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.